at 6.30, we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, I believe, is James Marley. That's That's what I have. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, thank you for uh, thank you to all members of the planning board for this opportunity present, to present on the updates for the agrivoltaic or dual use solar project that is being developed by Joe Sikowski and Hyperion Systems off of Shattuck Road in Hadley. I am Jake Marley, owner of Hyperion Systems. Also on the call tonight from Hyperion is Dr. Michael Lehan. I'd first like to state project overview of updates since the 518 planning board meeting before asking a question to the board at the end. Um, there are many misnomers within the solar industry that have become common use terms as it has become developed, especially over this last decade. The terms solar farm and agrivoltaics are not equal. Solar farms are generally labeled to projects that are on the utility scale size, two megawatts and above. The land below can only be used for solar production and usually requires a lot of land because of scale. This project has been designed to specifically keep the land below in production for the life of the solar array. Joe has been the leading voice in these conversations and the array has been designed to fit Joe's crop and production needs. If at any point during the PV array's time in the field, the land is no longer in production, the project economics will be significantly hindered. So we are designing for long-term agricultural and solar production as both Hyperion and Joe are incentivized to continue use of the land below. This is on top of the agricultural revenue stream that Lakeside Organics will be able to continue to commoditize through the produce generated under the array. This creates two revenue streams for the farm business, further enhancing Lakeside Organics business strength and viability. This is the primary basis and interest of the dual use project, in addition to on here and data results that will be gathered. Hyperion is a subcontractor on a UMass Amherst clean energy extension led grant research project that has gotten to the point of funding award negotiations through the US DOE's solar energy technology office. This grant will specifically provide funding for additional research at Joe's site in addition to sites across Massachusetts. This grant, Hyperion has participated on the U.S. Department of Energy grants and is currently a participation on a grant through the National Renewable Energy Laboratory INSPIRE project, which stands for Innovative Site Preparation and Impact Reduction on the Environment. At this time, I'll share my screen um, to review some of the site details and existing conditions and the updated plans. Hang on a second. <clears throat> Let me activate that. Okay. Everyone uh, see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this project is on a two, uh, it's on two acres, approximately two acres, five acre parcel um, off of Shattuck Road. There's significant um, natural screening um, from the road uh, due to these western tree row and eastern and northern forested area. Um, there's an existing farm access road from Shattuck that will be utilized uh, during the construction phase of the project. The first 75 feet of the road will need to be enhanced per Eversource codes. The center of the project is approximately 950 feet from Shattuck Road and 850 feet from Commons Road. Um, project updates uh, had the Conservation Commission approve the project uh, during their June 8th meeting with an accepted determination based on seven special conditions. This document has been shared with the planning board. We've submitted a habitat assessment report to NHESP. It looks like an approval with conditions will be the result here as well. We will inform the planning board of NHESP's findings once they're received. Interconnection service agreement application has been filed with Eversource. We anticipate hearing back from Eversource by next month. At this time, we'll be able to finalize the plans should their response be agreeable. Uh, the farm plans and future use. MDAR and DOER require a detailed plan and annual reporting requirements for farming under dual use solar for the life of the array. We have spent we have sent that plan to MDAR and Clean Energy Extension for review and have provided the planning board with a copy of Joe's anticipated farm plan. Joe intends to use the field for chicken production. Joe is currently raising his chickens in other Hadley fields. This is not a new production process for Joe. The chickens will be harvested and processed locally and the meat is sold to the university and other local retail entities. We have one question for the planning board this evening pertaining to the screening plan for the Southern Edge boundary uh, of the site. 
Hyperion has engaged with a local landscape contractor who indicated Eastern red cedars would work well. Does the planning board have comment? Otherwise, we will depict this on our next iteration of plans. Uh, the planting plan is for the trees to be spaced 12 feet apart along the southern boundary for this entire length, so 19 or 20 trees in total. Thank you. What total feet is that? It's approximately 240 feet. What is the expected mature height of the cedars? So Eastern red cedars can grow to a to a height of 40 feet. It's been indicated to me that at any point we can top the trees and stop the growth at that height. We can get them um, at a height of anywhere from four feet to 10 feet for, uh, for installation. How fast do they grow? I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay. The, uh, when will you be ready to apply for, when do, you, when do you want to apply for the special permit for this project? We would like to wait to hear back from Eversource uh, before moving through that process. Okay, that's fine. No problem. I mean, everything that you said is fine. I mean, he's going to raise chickens underneath that? Underneath this section of the uh, parcel, correct. Okay. And the other areas of the parcel will remain in uh, row production. He, he um, rotates okay. through that. That's a lot of chickens. You, <laughs> how, do you, how do you vet your... your uh, solar panel source to determine where they're coming from. I, that is to say, if you're getting them from China, how do you know if the rare earth minerals in, using the panels aren't produced by slave labor? That's a great question. And we typically rely on Canadian solar modules um, who are manufacturing the modules themselves. Um, we also have other suppliers uh, that we work with consistently that are uh, up to date on, on this practice, industry practice. You say typically, that means not always. Um, in, in, I can't speak to all of the arrays that Hyperion has developed, but in recent years, Canadian Solar has been the prominent supplier. Okay, good. Good. Does the uh, Eversource have any conditions or the, the conservation put any conditions on the right of way? Is there any specific width? Um, to the right of way, this farm access road? Yes. Kavasa, Kavasa. Yes, there are conditions from Eversource. Um, th there needs to be improvement, at least to their equipment. Uh, there will be a utility pole uh, installed within the first 50 feet. So we will need to widen the road, the farm access road, by six feet for the four first 75 feet of the farm access road. Is there any specific recommendations from the Conservation Commission as far as the road is concerned? Or usually the the fire chief has some recommendations. We, 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 Joe, Joe those, those questions are irrelevant tonight. Those are for the special hearing. Oh, we're, just okay. trying to get, we're just trying to, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to shut you off. Well, I, no, just, I, I just want to get real. If, if we could throw some of the questions out next time, he would say, well, I've contacted the fire okay. chief. And, All right. Uh, All right. And it would save a meeting or, or save. Yeah, that, 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 that's a fair, a fair point. Point. We would be happy to reach out to the fire chief before we're ready to present um, to the planning board through the special permit process. So if that's encouraged, recommended, we will do so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so when you make the presentation, you know, you'll have the width of the, uh, the access road and then you'll probably have to put some, some gravel or something in there, but nevertheless, that's, the, that's, you're right. That would be more specific for the public hearing. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Very good. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, and we look forward to continuing this dialogue. Okay. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I believe it's Randy next. I think so. Good uh, question. Here. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Randy. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Paul Naris for Exotic Auto at 10 to 12 Russell Street. Um, we were getting down to the nitty gritty and he had some signs made up and I sent Bill and Jim an email containing PDFs of those because I'm using my iPad and I don't think I can share my screen, or at least I don't know how to. 
Uh, so if you guys, one of you could put that stuff on the screen one, one at a time, and we can just talk about what it is. I mean, it's very similar to what he's got now. Uh, just uh, location on the building is what really is going to, you, you can look at that. So let me get one of those up and uh, let me see if I can do this. So Randy, you've photoshopped these onto the, yeah. Yes, uh, the, the sign designer did do that. He photoshopped them onto the building. Okay, does that come out? Is that visible? Yes, it is. Okay. Do we know dimensions? So that's one thing I don't know. And I asked the guy uh, before I left my office, and I don't know if he sent it to me, but it's a different email than I can get at home. Um, so I will find that out for sure. Uh, I'm guessing that, well, let's see that the exotic auto above the door looks like it might be two feet by 16. If that, uh, there's the, a sign there and then there's one intended for the West side of the building also. So I'm going to assume they're not more than 64 square feet total, but I will verify that. So uh, uh, it, my recollection was that Paul said he was going to use the existing signs. No, he's got this thing is that it was going to be similar. Okay. This is a different entity. I don't know what but, his business is called on Route 9, but this one, I know he said he created a new LLC or something or LLP. I don't remember which one, but it's Exotic Auto Service and Sales. I think in North Hadley, it's Exotic auto sales and service so um but it's the it, the colors are the same the you know it's all basically the same thing slightly different name so is that what the building going to look like well that's what it looks like now and if you i know it's going to need some work I, i'm pretty certain he's not going to be happy with the exterior of the building uh if you there's a, one more uh, picture of the west side of the building, and you can see on that that paint is peeling and whatnot, and I'm certain he'll take care of that. What about lighting, Randy? There's lighting there now, Mike. You can see it above the, the main sign. There's gooseneck or whatever you call those that they shine onto the building, so they're not going to you know, shine out into the street or anything like that. This is so that's the second the, image. Right. That's the west side of the building. So you can see where the paint is peeling. There's, And you can see the lights better, the front lights better there. Uh, and again, they're just pointed at the building. And I know he's, he said something about potentially putting windows on this side of the building uh, because it's dark inside. It's not going to change the exterior dimensions or anything. He'll just end up cutting holes in the wall and putting some windows in there. And if that's something that you guys need to get a look at, I'll have to have him come up with something for a picture. If, it, if, it would be nice to see what the building is going to look like when he's all said and done, Randy. Okay. 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 I, I do understand he's un under some pressure to move and probably is not going to do time, take time to renovate before he moves, but Exterior alterations are a trigger for site plan. So we do want to know what it's going to look like. Okay. Um, not a problem. I'm sure that he can get somebody to do that for him. If he's not, if he doesn't have an idea now and he needs to move now, then he's going to keep it like this and then he can ask for a change, but we can't guarantee okay. that it, it will go along with it. Understood. A year from now. Yeah, I get it. I understand what you're saying. All right. Well, I will I will run that by him tomorrow and then have him come up with something. Um, is there anything else that you guys need? Randy, the picture we're looking at right now, are those three goosenecks on the west face, are they existing or are they also? Photoshopped? They're there. They're there, Mark. Okay. 
The three on and, the side, three on the front are there. Okay. And then you sent two different emails. Um, and there's two different versions of the south elevation. One shows the two signs above the garage doors, and one yeah. shows the two signs at the top of the garage doors. Very good. I bet yeah. you can find Waldo. <laughs> Do you know what the choice is, or is that yes. just a... The one above the doors, the, the first the one was uh, not, the, he didn't like that. So it's the one where the signs are above the doors, not on top of the doors. Okay. Those signs uh, above the two garage doors, are we including them in the total square footage of the sign? I don't know. I mean, I can certainly do that. Are, do they qualify as signs or are they well, that, that uh, the something question. else? That, uh, how, how, how the board wants to address it. Yeah, you guys tell me how it is, and then uh, that, that that's a good question. I was wondering about that myself. Are they directional signs or are they advertising signs? They They're seem right. to be telling you the services. I I I kind of doubt that they only do the oil change tires and wheel alignments on the left, and do the tune-ups, brakes, and shocks on the right. But it's possible. All right. Well, let me see what what we've got for total dimensions planned right now, and. Uh, next meeting, I will uh, run that. You know, I'll, I'll get that information for you. Well, this and I'll, I'll, I'll look at it as if they are advertising signs, and hopefully, everything will come under the the, the maximum allowed. This Probably and, will. And what it, I know that if it was one sign, sixty-four square feet, and I don't remember how it works on the two, two sides of the building like this, is it still a total of 64 square feet or is there some leniency in that department? 60, 64 square feet total, no matter how okay. many sides you have it on. Okay. All right. No problem there. And um, just Bill, what was the name of that committee or whatever meeting that happened this afternoon? What's that? The uh, de development team. Okay, the development team. So I did, uh, Bill is privy to this, nobody else is. The uh, fire chief was concerned about a, a oil water separator. And I don't think it's under the board's purview, but I just want you to be aware of, of the situation. The state requires there to be a oil water separator of some form in this building. So that will have to happen uh I d again i just want to let you guys know that that's going to be part of the the process here okay now we used to have a feedback from the historical commission because this is in the uh, historical district part of uh, route nine uh the historical commission has sent us a comment that they no longer want to review these things regarding that stuff. Right. So the burden has been put on us to, uh, to certainly try to make it as look historical as possible, because certainly this is going to be one of the first things you see when you come into Hadley. Well, it's, it's pre-existing building and they're not making any exterior alterations except for windows. So it's kind of hard to make them make it look historical if it's not really going to be making any significant changes. And they're planning to repair the damaged paint. Are, is there an intent to change the color? I know that he has an affinity towards that light blue. I don't know the answer to that, Mark, but uh, to Jimmy's earlier point, you, you, you want to see what it's going to look like. So I will uh, see what he, you know, I'll, I'll get that out of him what he's going to, what his intention is for color. Okay. And we just, we, we do want to be careful because the, you know, the last time we did site plan approval and then they came back, they wanted to raise the roof and put a tower on and things like that, which is all well and good, but we just like to know. Sure. As far in advance as possible. Um, yeah. I, I get it. And I don't, I don't see an issue with asking for that. That seems well within reason. So uh, I will talk to him, like I said, tomorrow. And uh, hopefully- well, what, was the, what was the maximum amount of cars that could be on this lot? Is it 14? 
15. 15? Yeah. And what was North Hadley? I just can't remember. 16. 16. 16. And do we know if these, this existing building, if the lights are on 24 hours or, or I mean, overnight or if they're I off a certain. I don't know the answer yeah. to that, but my guess is he'll probably want to leave at least the lights on on the building because of the proximity to you know where it is it's easy for somebody to come in right. and steal something and run and get on 91 in two seconds so right i guess that he'll want to leave them on well there's also not a, houses. well there's this one house yeah. nearby. that's it yeah it's not really yeah. very residential right <laughs> Okay. Anything else on the board? All right. All right. Um, so no, other sign, no other signage except for on the building? Yes, that's okay. that's correct. All right. So what I will do is get the square footage of, of all the signage and then get a rendering of what the building will ultimately look like for the next meeting. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Deal. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Yep. Thanks, Andy. So let me stop sharing. And um, I see um, looks like Everybody's ready for the public hearings. Um, and Mr. Reedy, uh, Matt McTeague, a couple of the abutters. Um, uh, Andy Wildblad, are you here for the public hearings or he's, with questions? He's with us, Bill. He's with okay. us. Thanks. Okay. Then I think uh, we don't have any anybody. Uh, we have one phone number down there. So uh, if anybody else has any general questions for the planning board, this is the time. Otherwise, I think we'll go into our hearing schedule. Okay, we will start off with uh, Hadley Holistic. Mr. Reedy. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good to see everybody again. Uh, for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of Hadleaf. Uh, it's application for special permit uh, site plan approval um, for 251 Russell Street in Hadley. We were here last uh, June 15th. Thought we made a lot of progress. Got some feedback from the, the board and and the butters. And Bill, if you can allow me to share my screen, maybe I can show you a, a couple of things. Yeah, let me just double check. I think I did have it set. You did. Look at that. I yep. should have tried it. All set. Perfect. Okay. So if everyone can see my screen, uh, you should see a picture of Russell Street facing west. And I'm using this just to show um, what the applicant is proposing to do. So if, if you recall, I think we talked about signage last time and then screening amongst other things, but those were really the, the takeaway items that we saw or that we heard. And so as far as screening goes, what we would propose is, you know, once this fence, it, there was testimony that the fence is gonna come down as a result of what DOT is going to do with the roadway widen, widening and potentially um, some drainage back here. I wasn't able to find any plans on that. So assuming that that all happens and that comes down uh, the, the fence comes down What the applicant would accept the condition that they put a fence back up leading from that um, southerly tree line, I think, to about 50 feet from the roadway. And then from about 50 feet from the roadway where that fence ends to the roadway or probably to like about here to just do some um, low growth shrubs. So something that probably won't exceed, let's say, three to four feet, just to allow for the appropriate sight lines. How so, tall will the how tall will the uh, fence be, uh, Tom? Yeah, so I think it would be a six foot high fence. So I've got they would propose something like this because that's about the same. It's it's vinyl, 
but that's about the same color that exists there now. If, if the uh -huh. board or if the abutter has um, strong opinions on the color, they're not wedded to this color. They just thought okay. this was a Thanks. classy look. And Tom, I'm sorry, you said that the fence will start at the southerly tree line and come what to the front line of the building or? Yeah, about 50. Yeah, that's about 50 feet. If, if you if you take that front line, um, let's see if I can. So if you took this where the building is about yep. to there is about 50 feet. So okay. it, it would about end right about here. And then yeah. we would just do some low growth shrubs for a deterrent just because there was some testimony about people whether they're parking in this lot and coming over or going from here over to that property. And, and so we, we obviously wouldn't want to bring a fence all the way up because of sight lines, et cetera. So we thought that that was a good solution, especially given kind of what is there now. So about 50 feet from the building, you know, being sensitive to what DOT is going to do with that roadway widening as well. Cause I, I'm not sure exactly how far off that the uh, curb is going to be. So we would, you know, Make sure that there were still appropriate sight lines, but that would be the proposal. Okay. And we've got, you know, something like this where you've got just that shrubs, low lying shrubs. This is as, as if you were standing there. Um, so those are those. And then this was the sign that we had proposed last time for the, for freestanding. You see it has that cannabis right across and, and we heard some feedback uh, relative to, to advertising for the cannabis on that freestanding sign. So what we did was somewhat simple fix, you know, put cannabis in smaller letters down at the bottom and instead put dispensary across uh, that sign, just obviously to advertise the use at the site. Um, unfortunately, Mike, we, we stuck with Hadleaf. That is the name of, of the entity. And so well, that's, that's fine. But my, it's my feeling is at least one other board member whose name will go and mention that you're mocking Hadley's agricultural heritage. And that certainly wasn't. No, the face, huh? um, that's face. what you're doing. Okay. Um, and so those are the, those are the two changes proposed to what we had presented uh, last time. Okay. Comments from the board, questions? Hearing none, open it up to the anybody on the Zoom call want to make any comments? Ah, yes, it's Marguerite Miller. Hello, gentlemen, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, Marguerite. How is everyone? How is everyone's 4th of July? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Good. Uh, yes, I just have a, I still am, I still have the same concerns that I did to our last meeting. And I understand that they're willing to put the fence up, which that would, I don't have a problem with the color or anything, but my question um, that I'm looking for an answer is the 15th and I'm not quite able to, is how far does a dispensary need to be from a residential building? Because I, I got some news that it was 300 feet from a school, a hundred feet from a daycare, 300 feet from a daycare, um, you know, a hundred thousand feet from a school or something of that nature. But how far exactly must it be uh, from a residential structure? The, I believe the state did not have a minimum footage from a residential structure. The town zoning bylaw did have a minimum, res, did minimum set, setback. They went for a variance for that item and they received a variance, I don't know, several months ago at least. Correct. So they received a variance from whatever was required under the zoning bylaw. So they're required to, they're allowed to be where they are. Okay. So this is going to take place is what you guys are telling me, no matter to my abutting, no matter to it, it, what it I- It appears to be a very good possibility that, that is, this is going to happen, yes. Plus you've decided to engage legal counsel and try to stop it. Well, I apologize, but this may something that may have to be taken place of because I have, I understand that I'm not a daycare center. I understand all of these situations, but I do pay my taxes and have I have been here for many, many years. 
Um, like I said, their, their timing is from what was it, from 10 till 8. I think it was every single day. Um, there are going to be children in the vicinity. This is my home. I am the only one who is directly associated to them. And I just, and again, I still have the same questions um, that are happening that I had on the 15th. And concerns, not so much of questions, but as of concerns. My concerns haven't changed. Okay. And, and I don't mean to be, you know what I mean? The, the mean one, but I live here. My business is here. My uh, financial growth is here next door. Everything I do is here. I live here. I eat here. I'm here 365 days out of the year. Other businesses close at five o'clock. I, I live here. Well, I think to repeat what uh, I think uh, Jim Maximowski said last time was that they would be given a permit for a year and they come back. And if they have not lived up to, if we've gotten substantial complaints and they have not lived up to what they are saying that there won't be crowds, there won't be anyone going across the grass and bothering you, um, then we don't have to renew it next year. I understand, but that's still like one year of me living next door to a dispensary. Again, I'm not trying, I, I, I have no, I have no, you, that, that's fine. I have no how to say that I'm not coming from a, um, a bad place. I, I understand that there's needs for these things. I understand that they're there. But like we said, there's one almost in Amherst. There's one on Damon Road. And now they're putting distillery up on the sign. Um, again, a dispensary. I am, I, I, you know, the collection, it says the collection. It's not bad. If they're, if they're looking for it, they're going to find it. This is, and, 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 that, and, and that's true. And because there are so many dispensaries not that far apart, it's not like they're going to have lines and lines long like Northampton had when they first opened. The existing dispensaries have reasonable business, um, but nothing that's overwhelming with lots of traffic. I've not seen that in any of the local dispensaries within probably in the, in the Hadley and North Amherst ones that have them. Um, they, they, they do okay, but they're not beyond uh, lines and lines. I don't know what else you could tell you. I, 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 I totally understand what everyone's saying, but I would my house is open to anyone that would like to live here with me for a year with a dispensary next door. And, and, and if anybody wants to come in and move in and live with a dispensary next door when they open up, you're more than willing to come and visit or spend the night or stay till eight or nine or 10 o'clock. I understand what the board is saying. I understand that, you know, I'm not here to stop growth in any way. The more business we have on Route 9, the more business, the more that I get on Route 9. I don't have a problem, but this, so uh, I will be living here for one year with a dispensary and seeing what, what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. I don't want to be, I, I don't want to be a negative Nancy or anything and, and keep an eye and watch and do all of these things. That, that's not what I'm here to do. I believe in the growth of Hadley. I believe in our community. I, 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 I love our community. We've been in our community. I've been here for over 17 years. I take respect when I say that I live in the town of Hadley. Any, anybody else have comments or questions? By our expectations, and you will be pleasantly surprised that you won't even know that the business next door has changed. That's a, that is our hopes. But we also hope that you will let us know of any infractions. I think I would be that person that would let you know. <laughs> to be honest, 
if if there are problems, we want to know about it when there are. I mean, you know, nothing's going to be perfect, and I think you realize that. But if there are significant or noticeable problems, we want to hear about them, and so does the selectman and the and the fire and the uh, police department, because you know that's not what it's supposed to be about. No, I agree. I, I totally agree. But, but so. I, I hope everyone understands from where I'm coming from. Again, it, I'm not coming from a, a, a place of disapproval or a place of, do you know what I mean? Or, or, or of a harshness. Is this that I've seen them before. There are so many around us um, that I, I wish that it was some other business. Do you know what I mean? Going up and then having that sign that says now, what is it going to be saying? Dispensary? Cannabis on the bottom? And they're still using the Hadley name as the holistic. Um, could we come up if if I have to live with it next door? Could we come up with another name? I, I'm not trying. I understand that we're putting the fence up. That's fine. There has to be shrubs up. There has to be some kind of barrier from them coming into my property, which the I'm name, fine with that. The names are beyond the purview of the planning board. Zone in zone bylaws. That that being said, I really don't understand what's holistic about getting stoned. I just don't understand that. I guess it's herbal, so I guess it's I don't know. So would there be any way that we would be able to change again that sign? This uh, uh, the sign yeah. complies yeah. with the zoning bylaw. Yeah. They have made some changes to with the funds to downplay the cannabis. Um, as far as changing the names, the name, like I said, that's beyond it's beyond our legal jurisdiction. Yes. So we would be liable if we make that a requirement of oh that. let them sue you know let them sue well, I don't, that, you know, that gets I don't into care. the area of being <laughs> arbitrary and capricious yeah, yeah. we're not going to go there well but, you know i haven't been worried about being sued over the years on this board and i'm not going to start worrying being sued by a pot shop okay any any other comments or questions no, I, but, I, but i just have a question and i know this is going to sound a little bit off but let me just let me just throw it out there. A while ago back, we used to have a massage parlor that was down the street from me, maybe about three houses, right? And they had on their sign massage, correct? And they had with the times that they were open and you know their services that was on there. And I believe that that place was raided not very long after. So do we have to have this up? Like, so if I was to go out there and if I was to put that I'm an escort and I were to put, well, I do escort services and have that up on my sign, we wouldn't have a problem with that? We can, I couldn't answer that. I don't know the answer to that. That's a little bit. Right, right, but, no, but, but no, everyone's but, saying that you can't change, we can't make him not put cannabis on there. We can't make him not put distillery on there. So I, I could go and put a sign up take my palm and tarot card sign off and put escort service and that'll be okay. Sure. You can put the sign up. If you do, if you conduct the business, you'll, you can have a chat with. Hey, the listen, team. COVID has been bad. I might have to do something. Uh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're just saying that, you know, it's a legal question and without knowing details, we can't get, but there are legal escort services. Of course, but I'm just saying this in reference. How would you know? <laughs> I'm just saying that these are references that I don't like Hadley holistic. I, I, I feel as such as this gentleman standing in us. Uh, uh, I don't like Hadley holistic. I don't like that. It's going to be saying distillery. I do not like that. It's going to be saying cannabis. I understand that I cannot stop them from coming in, but, and I don't want to be that person that watches them all the time, but, we, we And I have no issue with the fencing. Thank you. I truly appreciate that barrier that will be put up, the barrier of the fencing and of the uh, shrubs. I need as much barrier as I possibly can not to be coming in, not to be parking, not to have all of these things. 
uh, that are around. I am concerned that there's going to be a lot of police around. I am concerned that there's going to be uh, people smoking pot in that backyard. They have a very large parking lot in the back and on the left-hand side. That is also can be very adjacent once those trees come down to my property. Um, but so, can, can, can I, I, I want to try to be as... I, I'm just concerned you're, you're overdoing the, uh, the police presence. The, uh, at the annual renewal for the other dispensary on the Amherst line, the uh, police chief reported absolutely no complaints. Yeah, because they're right between friendlies and they're between dominoes. They're not in a residential area. No, so I, a, could see, I can't there, see why would a, they get complaints. There is a house of, wor house of worship right next to them, and they had no comment. Where is the house of worship? Directly next to them. There's a church, there's a house of worship next door to the collective? The, uh, there was, there was the a one building away. The Hampshire Mosque. The old, uh, the old ski place is a house of worship. Really? I had no idea. I knew that there was an escape room there. I knew that there was a yeah, domino the there. In the same building as the escape room is a house of worship. And what time does the house of worship conduct uh, their I service? I have no idea. I don't know. And to what time, do does the, and what time does the collective close? Collections, what time do they close? I don't recall off the they're, top they're of my head. They're 10 to 8. Were. Mm -hmm. 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. Mr. Reedy, was there a... Um, did we, do I remember hearing at the last meeting that there is a restriction that they are not to consume on site? Correct. Correct. That's state law, if I remember, right? Yes. And it's, I think that's also in your bylaw, but yes, that's state law. Okay. And is there, is there intended oversight of that by the proponent? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they'll lose their, they'll lose their permit. And so all the investment that they've made on the site for the lease, for the interior improvements, their, their business plan, product, et cetera, uh, plus reputational hit because Cannabis Control Commission, when they come down, they come down hard. So yeah, there, there won't be. Um, and the, secu the security that. cameras all around a building, right, Tom? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, do, I don't think it's going to be like your, you know, your high school weed dealer of 1975. I, I think it's very professional, but hey, time, wait, 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 time wait, will you're, tell. You're, you're, hit, you're hitting home here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, yeah. One thing perhaps the, the neighbor is emphasizing the residential aspect of uh, you know, where she lives and where she works. Zoning, however, is, has districts that they declare residential. And if you are in a residential district, you could not conduct your business there. So you have a unique opportunity to live and work in the same building. And it's almost a gift. And uh, I, if it were in a residential area, this would not be allowed according to zoning issues. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dwyer. Okay, let me, uh, seven, six, one. So I'll make a motion to approve the application for site plan approval special permit and to approve the application for a marijuana retailer special permit based upon the following findings. Project satisfies the general purposes of the site plan approval bylaw. Project is in harmony with the general purposes of Article 30 adult use marijuana establishments. The project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood, which is zoned business. The intended uses are not prohibited by the bylaw and are permitted thereby. Uh, the board uh, determines the work will be conducted in accordance with the plans filed with site plan approval. Uh, as amended. 
And if you will, Mr. Reedy, get me copies of the revised documents. Um, I will incorporate them. Okay. Uh, copies of the application have been distributed as provided in the bylaw. Uh, bylaw satisfies site plan approval uh, criteria um, and has previously received site plan approval. Uh, the design features, uh, including uh, drainage, exterior colors, roof lines, doors, and windows are an integral part of the approved design. The approval is uh, for the following uses only, uh, an Article 30 adult use marijuana establishment. Sign detail is as specified in the zoning bylaw, landscaping and fences installed, maintained according to the reference plan. Uh, any outdoor lighting newly installed or replaced shall be shielded. No storage trailers, shipping containers, temporary or permanent storage, or any other storage facility not depicted on the approved site plans will be allowed. Approval is subject to other boards if and as required, including Conservation Commission, Sewer Commission, Water Commissioners, and state agencies with jurisdiction. Any project changes directed by other boards must be approved by the Planning Board. Uh, project will be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant on behalf of the planning board at the expense of the applicant and um, shall not, the uh, site plan approval should not be uh, come effective until the notice of decision is a reference to um, site plan and recorded the registry of deeds. Registered marijuana dispensaries. Um, this is an Article 30 adult use marijuana establishment. The location satisfies Section 30 as modified by a variance issued by the Hadley Zoning Board of Appeals. The application is complete. Um, the adult marijuana establishment is designed uh, to minimize any adverse visual or economic impacts on abutters and other parties in interest. The facility demonstrates that it will meet all the permitting requirements of all applicable agencies within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The applicant has satisfied all of the conditions and requirements of this section and other applicable sections of this bylaw. Uh, the adult use project meets a demonstrated need. The facility provides adequate security. Uh, it adequately addresses issues of traffic demand, circulation, flow, uh, uses will be in strict compliance with section 30. Uh, no sale um, shall occur upon the premises between the hours of 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. Uh, and this is where we have an opportunity to limit hours. Uh, I believe that the request was 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Correct. Um, all aspects of the facility will be constructed as operated as shown on the application. All signage will be as shown on the application. The applicant is responsible for the re strict compliance with the reporting requirements. Special permit is specific to this applicant. Uh, and it is for an adult marijuana establishment as defined in section 1.2 and any other use or purposes require further approval. That is the motion. That is the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion a second. I'm going to do this a little bit different. Anyone opposed to this? Anyone, if you're opposed, say nay. There ain't none. All those in favor. All right. I'm going to abstain. Aye. I'm going to abstain. On what grounds? Ones I enunciated. Your what? The ones I previously enunciated. Okay. We have one abstention. Therefore, Mr. Dwyer, your your call. Your uh, yeah, four four eyes, no nays, one abstention. Um, right. All in favor? I mean, I'm gonna we want to do a roll call, but roll call just to cover our basis here. Okay, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, Dwyer, I. Maximoski. I. Sarzinski. Abstain. Zagrodnik? Aye. Done. Aye. Okay, motion passes, four is zero, one abstention. Thank you very much. Very good. 
the reason for a roll call vote is under the Zoom laws or the rules, I'm not quite sure you want to call guidance, that unless it's a unanimous vote, you're supposed, you should do a roll call vote. So since most of our votes are unanimous, we don't do, haven't been able to doing that, but just to cover the base here. We appreciate that for right. sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. Thanks everyone. Thank you guys. Thank Have you. a good night. Bye-bye. Mr. Squire. I'm sorry that that didn't end happier for you, Marguerite, but hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised. Mr. You're Squire, you're up for uh, Okay, I guess we'll find out. Pet Hotel. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, I think it, 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 during the, from the time of the last hearing, I my understanding was the, the butter notifications went out. Um, I know there were some questions or comments about, you know, pet waste and, and you know, how that, that process is managed. You know, obviously, um, you know, we mentioned that any, any, any of the feces would be picked up just like they are, you know, everywhere else uh, in the, within the facility and disposed of accordingly. Um, for any of the pet urine, you know, the little bit of research that I did found that, you know, 95% of, of, you know, dog and cat urine is, is water. The remaining 5% is urea, which is broken down into a usable form of nitrogen. So I, you know, I really don't think that they'll be much of an impact, um, you know, from, from any of the dog urine um, out there, especially, you know, given the, the proximity to um, any of the vegetated surfaces. Um, so I don't, yeah, if there's any other questions or comments, uh, you know, I'm happy to answer anything else the board um, wants to ask. Any comments from the board? I think could we kind of covered this really, we covered it pretty well last time. This is more for the abutters because we has in case any abutters had any concerns. Right. Are there any other? concrete, correct? It is concrete, correct. Yeah, concrete pad. It's an existing concrete pad that's there today. Correct. Do we have any abutters? Who is 01? This is the phone number 413-213-0138. Is this, are you here for this or for something different? My name's Tim Healy. I'm here for the Pet Hotel. I'm the contractor what? looking, I'm the contractor who hired Jeff uh, oh. as the go-between. <laughs> okay. All right. That's, that's, that's fine. We just want to make sure we don't miss you. Okay. So you're I can be missed. That's okay. You're obviously <laughs> in favor of the project. I would think. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, the butter, the notices went out to all the butter that Mr. Squire gave me over two weeks ago. And there's nobody on the call. So with that, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, can I just ask Jeff, what did we end up with for any mitigating uh, barriers in terms of sound? Were we doing any planting or a fence or... So, I mean, there's, there isn't, um, if you can see the screen, I mean, there's a small space for some plantings um, on the west end. Um, there really isn't much room on the, um, what is that, the north side, I guess, um, or the east side, given that's all concrete and, and mechanical equipment now. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying to do a little bit on the, on the west side, but really don't have much room anywhere else that would really be an effective sound barrier. Okay. Um, what, what, so, what is, how, how, where is your southern property line, Jeff? Uh, let's see. It is just beyond, let's see. Do I have another plan? So you can see, yes. So there's, there's the western boundary here. Um, I guess this would be south and then the east boundary. Okay. Could you put anything on? the southern boundary like even some arbor vitae or something or some kind of a shrub because uh, i know i've heard, i've had some received some comments in the past about lights when cars are driving through there and just to kind of i mean they're not going to do much for the noise but at least maybe keep some of the because i'm sure you're going to have lights out there um I, I mean i imagine most of the the fenced in area would be limited to you know the hours of operation which um you know i don't i don't think they're open to the public um you know, beyond much, I, I don't know, Tim, you may know, but, um, yeah. Well, in the mean, last meeting, we put hours on it. It was like, I'm guessing, but we put hours of the outside. For the outside, right. Play area to be like eight to five or something like that. Right, right. Okay. I believe. So we're not, there's no additional lighting being added. 
There might be one or two wall packs on the building now, but we're not planning on adding any lighting. So, so you won't be walking the dogs beyond like five o'clock in the afternoon, something like that. Right. Okay, right. that's correct. All right. All right. Okay. And we're not looking to add any wall packs or anything out. I mean, I, I assume there's one or two over. There's an exit door there that, uh, you know, emergency exit out the back of the building. So I, I assume right. there's a wall pack near there. But uh, we're not planning on adding anything. Okay. There's, right. There's no and new site there, lighting that's proposed. Is there, okay. a, is there a fence or a tree line along the west property line? There is along this line. There's an, ex an existing, um, yeah, you can see, you know, there's a fair amount of vegetation that, that exists there now. Okay. All right. Is there any, is there any, I mentioned this last week, is there any concern about the concrete getting really hot? In the summertime, my wife's an industrial designer. I'm not the expert, but she is. And she tells me that the, the chemical composition of concrete absorbs heat. It's it's a crystal. Hmm. Hmm. There's a roof I mean, over, isn't there? No. No, no, not over this. I mean, con concrete, you know, um, at least from my experience, stays, you know, much cooler than any of the other, you know, even gravel surface in, to some extent, depending on the color of it. But certainly cooler than asphalt or any of the, it's, it's really has to do with the, with the color of the, of the material. So the lighter the color, the more it reflects, the less heat it absorbs. Um, Just really, they absorb heat from the sun, which is generally considered undesirable for its effect on yeah. the environment. Well, I, I don't know if I agree with that, but anyway, just concerned about the poor doggy's paws. That's all. Yeah. Gray, yeah. gray concrete yeah. is far cooler than a blacktop that you're going to walk your dog on in the yeah. summer. Yeah. yeah. Just like Mr. Squire says, the gray, the gray or the whiter, the whiter color of concrete will reflect the heat. It's not that it doesn't get warm, but it's not going to be like a blacktop that's going to get really, really hot. So I just took a look at the tax maps and the um, I'm I'm surprised that anyone's complaining about the um, about head, were you saying they were complaining about headlights going through? It's the, I've heard, I received some comments about the lights yeah. going through. I believe this, this, the, uh, okay, now you got me confused. I know what I looked at here. Oh, there's Route 9. Okay. Yeah, so it's sort of, it's sort of like it, it, the, the houses uh, down, um, The nearest houses on the cross street are almost a thousand feet away. Mm. And the backyards of the houses on East Street are four and 500 feet away. So, uh, and, yeah, and just, depending on the time of year, obviously, and what crops are being grown, would certainly have an impact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but, but I mean, the operation is only going to be until five o'clock in the afternoon to walk and dog. That's, that's not a problem. Yeah. Right. And nobody showed up for this thing. All, any, anybody that had made comments to me previously received a notice about this. So. Okay. If we have no other comments, Mr. Dwyer. Okay, I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for exterior dog walk. Second. Uh, and um, let's see, uh, outside hours, not eight to five. And no, uh, no new lighting. <laughs> I think that covers it. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. second. Have second. A motion. motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Terrific. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. I'll get a letter off to the uh, building inspector, Jeff, simply okay. waiving this. So since there's, it's very informal and no formal process, you can go and apply probably whatever, this week, next week. Sure. 
If there's even, okay. you, do you even need a building permit? Is there anything to do or just go outside and start using it? I don't know. I, we'll probably close the loop with the building department just to make sure, okay. but yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Have a nice Thank night. you. All right, good night. Okay, we will uh, make a motion to reopen the planning board regulations on MS4 for stormwater. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion. Well, we've continued it, so it's still open. So I'll make okay. a motion to adopt the regulations. Do we have a second? Second. A motion a second. Any other discussion? This is just a formality to make sure we cover the bases on voting properly at the right time. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, oh, there's something we were supposed to for, for Bill was was that we received from. Uh, Excuse so, me. Uh, yes, from, we did get a uh, request from uh, uh, Joan Zusko and the Personnel Department, Human Resources, uh, to adopt a rate authorization sheet. And the only change in the rate is uh, uh, DD's rate of reimbursement, which has increased by, looks like about 30 cents an hour. Okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion to authorize the chairman to sign the rate authorization sheet dated 7121. Motion, do we have a second? I'll no, second. Sorry. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um, I, have, I have nothing, no. So this comes up under the heading of, uh, well, maybe it's, uh, well, it comes up under the heading of it, something that popped up uh, really recently. Uh, um, uh, I just mentioned this, Joe was alluding to it earlier, and I don't know if this is anything we want to take a position on. Uh, I don't know if we know enough about everything that's going on here. But um, I have been given to understand that the select board is considering uh, changing the size of the Conservation Commission from seven members to five members and in the process not renewing the um, appointment of two members who coincidentally come up for renewal this year. Um, and those two are, uh, Paulette and Steve, uh, Steve Simkowitz, um, Simkowitz is it? Yes, I guess so. Anyway, um, so this, this sort of came out of, I'm not sure where it came out of or what it came out of, um. Uh, I, as I've said before, and some of the decisions that get made are bad planning. Um, it does seem that this was a little abrupt and it may have some connection to the complaints the select board have been receiving that the Conservation Commission is doing its job enforcing the river, uh, its riverfront regulations. Um, so I'm sort of passing it along. This is, is news, new development. Uh, this is apparently going to come up at the select board meeting tomorrow night. Um, and I don't know how people feel about it. Uh, certainly we've worked with the Conservation Commission as part of the land use development uh, team, if, as it were. Um, they do their things, we do our things. Um, but I do feel a certain responsibility since we went through all the exercise of getting the river regulations rewritten so that, uh, we get the planning board and the ZBA out of it and leave the 
authority where it already is um, with conservation and the building inspector. And um, I'm not sure if that isn't what, um, what has led to this feeling that the uh, Conservation Commission doesn't need to be as big as it is. Um, so so it's, it's your feeling, Bill, that then the new regulations may not be strictly enforced if this happens? Well, the zoning regulations, I think, will continue to be enforced uh, by the building commissioner as zoning right. enforcement officer. Uh, what I don't know is what impact this would have on the enforcement of the wetlands regulations. And I don't know enough about it, and I will try to find out a little bit more. Um, if someone doesn't like what we do, there is a clear appellate route to uh, either Superior Court or Land Court. Uh, if people don't like what the Conservation Commission does, I think that gets appealed up to uh, administratively through the Department of Environmental Protection. I'll try to find out more about that. Um, my, my feeling is that the what is holding everything together at the moment in this environment where we have both elected and appointed boards, but no particular staff support or limited staff support. The, the thing that's holding this whole show together is, is our expertise and the Conservation Commission's expertise. Well, they and have to support. start dropping, letting people or dropping people who have the expertise. My sense is that you're deciding that it, the most important thing in, for the town to do next is hire a conservation director for $60,000. Janice Stone is their expertise as well. I mean, they, they do have a consultant. They do have some support. Um, that. Uh, well, but one other thing you somebody brought up, the fact that the Zoning Board of Appeals is out of the business. I understand that one of the applicants who was appearing before us has a quarter of acre right along the river and he wants to have five trailers and evidently he's only limited to two. Uh, I think if that appears before the ZBA, uh, that's, that's kind of, I don't think one could qualify as for a variance. Well, that's should we should, should we make our opinion known there or should we just stay out of it? So this is something, uh, as far as that goes, it's a new bylaw. Um, and what we were trying to do was create some balance so that um, there'd be respecting public safety. Um, if the guy wants to ask for a variance, I suppose that's his business. Uh, but don't uh, you need a hardship to request a variance? You do. Yeah, right. That's so, technically correct, Mike. But one man's hardship is another man's, right? Good with that. <laughs> well, typically on a hardship, if, if there are no, if no one is making things against it, the ZBA, and this goes not just to our ZBA, but to most ZBAs, if there isn't opposition, most many ZBAs will grant the variance. But if there's opposition, then the ZBA start to apply the bylaw accordingly. I, I think we should per perhaps then send a note and say in the spirit of the new zoning bylaw, this putting three trailers on a quarter acre lot is prohibited. I, Period. Just, I think he's requesting five. Five? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm the newest guy here. Let's say that some taxpayers in town go complaining to the select board because they don't like the fact that we're enforcing our local and state zoning uh, and planning requirements. Does the select board, could they then turn around and slap us and knock us down to three? No, no. Is that within their power without- Oh, well, state law. Town no, the, the, plan, the planning board is set by town meeting. It's elected too. Yeah. I think it goes beyond enforcement of issues. 
if uh, if we or one of us decides to call somebody as a, for a zoning violation and goes on their property, then that is a is that's not our job. We're as Bill has always said, we're a permitting granting authority. We're not a a zoning enforcement officer. And uh, it appears sometimes they have two hats. But I, I don't think we should get involved. I mean, it's not, it's not our, our business. I mean, well, this is kind of Mar or Marbury versus Madison moment. <laughs> you know, we, we have to define our turf. So in, in this case, it is not our turf that is being attacked, Correct. at least not directly. Yeah. What well, is, it is, excuse me, go ahead, Bill. What is being jostled here, or disrupted, is a fairly efficient land use development operation that we run here. Um, it's, it, you know, Perhaps Conservation Commission has a slightly different slant. I look at us as being pretty pro-business. We try to find a way to help a developer make things work. And Absolutely. I'm not sure the Conservation Commission always sees it that way, that may, they may see a greater need to protect the environment and not let the developer do what he wants, but they have their own statutory basis for it. But the development merry-go-round involves planning board, conservation commission primarily, building commissioner to an extent, ZBA pops in occasionally. Um, and it's all running fairly smoothly for the benefit of the town. Um, and that's why I said that you know, part of the, what, what makes it work is we have people in these seats with a lot of knowledge. Um, and you mentioned Joe Janice Stone is, is there. Well, she is today. Um, but uh, I'm just concerned that if there is a, um, a move away from trying to find people who know their jobs uh, because you don't like how they're doing their jobs, then um, that's a slippery slope and uh, we're going to get repercussions. We're going to get people who are having trouble getting approved design through the Conservation Commission. So like the guy who was uh, here for um, the solar installation, you know, he, he wanted to get conservation first. He, want, he, he has multiple things he wants to clear before he files with us. And the longer it takes him to get through the others, the longer it takes him to get to us and the longer it takes to get to yes. Um, if that's where so it's your, it's your impression that the two people who will not be reappointed would be willing to be reappointed if they were, uh, my understanding is they think they already were Oh, on the consent agenda from a week ago or two weeks ago. Um, and apparently the select board has, uh, felt that perhaps it wasn't clear who was being appointed to what on the consent agenda, so they wanted to reopen it. Um, a very murky area. Um, and um, I, I'm sure, that, I certainly hope they have discussed this with town council. Um, they want to well, reopen at a select board meeting or at the, at the next town the select board tomorrow night wants to reopen its appointment of two members to the Conservation Commission from the consent agenda of um, June, whatever that was, 22nd. June they were, they were going to meet the prior week. They postponed their meeting because they didn't want to take the risk that we were willing to take that the state legislature would apply the new law retroactively. So they went forward, they appointed their names from the consent agenda, but uh, apparently have on the agenda an item to reopen the appointments from two weeks ago or a week ago. 
So, um, but they, before before you go on to the next topic, or we must uh, decide: are, are we going to go ahead with a Zoom meeting? That was another thing you were going to we were going to bring up too. Yeah. Well, so on the conservation issue, let's just cl close that off. Um, I'm not sure that we have enough information exactly right to take a position as a board. Uh, I generally do attend the select board meetings via Zoom, and uh, I will plan to attend tomorrow night, and I might or might not feel a need to say something uh, on my own behalf. I will not speak for the board, but I will speak as a member of the board. Yeah, I will be there, but not with my planning board hat on. Yeah. Bill, do you know what time the consent agenda is coming up? Well, it's it's a separate item. Okay. And it is uh, one of the later items on their new agenda. Not that it's a big agenda. Okay. Um, so no, I don't know. And they also sh mix and match their agenda items. Okay. Their meeting starts at six thirty. I believe six. so. Hang on a second. I, Let me. I, get it. I got says, a call from a. I got a call from a taxpayer oh, a couple hours ago. He needed the select board to take a vote on releasing liens on his property down in the honey pot. He's got a closing Monday and the meeting was canceled. So the vote never took. It's just basically a rubber stamp. Will he be able to get this issue voted on tomorrow night, Bill? Or not? Uh, let me see what's on the agenda. And I think the, according to the, the town calendar, it says six o'clock. But maybe they also open their doors. Uh, no, I think that they actually are doing it. Yeah, they're having a meeting with the finance committee. Um, go over end of the year. So hang on a sec as I get this. Um, they have um, consent agenda is sort of top of the list and uh, public comments, town administrator report. Uh, they have some appointments with the finance committee, then uh, some new business. And then under old business, uh, which is item seven on the agenda, uh, annual appointments, renewal, additional meeting. And um, um, the select board will also discuss the lowering of the numbers of members of the Conservation Commission from seven to five. So that's currently at the end of their agenda, but they've been known to shuffle. They have. Uh, How long have they been seven members, Bill? For nine forever? I don't know. Um, um, it has been for a while. Uh, they used to be a five-member board, I think, but... Uh, So uh, let me just, uh, no, there's no, I was looking at if there's anything more substantial in board docs. Um, so yes, this is gonna come up at some point after uh, 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 some point after 6 p.m. tomorrow. That's all I can tell you. I think it's a it's probably the best idea. We don't have enough information to take a stance on it, but uh, Mr. Bill's going to attend. I'm going to try to attend, and we can make our personal opinions noted as part of a planning board, but not a vote of the planning board. Correct. Official position. And I will leave that to you. I will be attending as a as a citizen, not with my planning board hat on. So that I do not, I don't uh, offend the rest of the board members as I speak against this power grab.
I think it is not unfair to identify yourself as a member of the planning board. Uh, in fact, you probably should uh, yeah. before then going on to say that you are speaking on your own behalf and not right. on behalf of the board. Right. Okay, um, so um, Zoom. Yeah, I think that was Joe's question, right? Yeah, I was talking or chatting with Jim just before the formal meeting opened and I was wondering, uh, has there been any state requests uh, to extend the Zoom meetings or do we have to go to an open meeting the state has extended, to my understanding, the state has extended approval to conduct Zoom meetings until sometime in April 2021. At point, or prior to that point, the state is supposed to make some de determination as to what to do be after that point. Hybrid personal meetings, Zoom meetings, combination, they don't know. Okay. I don't feel there's any other information on that. So this might be uh, a, a, an opportunity to bring John in from Happy Media. Just uh, to correct you, um, Jim, you, you accidentally said until April 2021. You meant April 2022. I'm sorry, 2022. You're right. Yeah, my yeah. mistake. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, we're gonna Bill. Go we're going to go back a year in time. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Bill. So we do have a grasp of how to do Zoom meetings. Um, the question, uh, the next question would be, if, if we had to do all in person, we would probably do it either at the, the new library or the senior center with appropriate spacing, but perhaps much reduced participation. Uh, and then there's the world of hybrid meetings, which involves some of us there, some of us here. I don't know if anyone has tried to work that out, and I don't know if Hadley Media has anything to contribute to the how feasible hybrid meetings are. Mr. John, you got any two cents worth there? He might have run out for a coffee. I know a couple, and I don't think they work well. Um, you just can't see everybody that's talking. We've had some union meetings at UMass where they go, oh, uh, where we've had like 17 screens because there's a thousand people in the Zoom and they make everyone use the raise hand function. And I guess the moderator can tell that there must be an order of who raised their hand first. So I don't know how you would balance that with the people raising their hand live in person, but yeah, it's going to be complex. But I, I, to speak, you know, my two cents. I think the public engagement has been so much higher with um, Zoom. I mean. It looks like Tommy is here tuned in and is listening to us as he does other things at home. You know, he wouldn't be doing that if, if he had to be there in person. Hey, Tom. hey Tommy. It's, I mean, I, I'm saying I don't think he would be there. You know, and, and that's a that's that's a comment that you hear over and over again for a variety of things. You know, engineers, contractors, consultants, they can talk to us from any place, literally. Yeah. As long as oh, they have access to the to the internet, regardless of where they are in the in the world, it's certainly easier. But as someone said, democracy was never meant to be easy. Well, yeah. I know there, there's a comment occasionally that made about uh, well, there are seniors who um, seniors who don't have technology skills, and there are, I'm sure. Um, but I'm not sure those are people who would make their way to a winter meeting at town hall either. Yeah, correct. Um, 
And I think that for every senior who may be technology, have technology challenges, I can probably raise you two seniors who don't want to drive at night any more than they have to. I mean, the seniors that we have seen in our meetings and that I have seen in the selectmen's meeting, I, I've, been, I've been surprised at how many people have the technology necessary to do the simple Zoom meeting. I mean, it's not like it's high tech by any stretch, but face it, you, you live in an area where people have access to technology and Zoom meetings aren't an issue. Most, I, would, I don't well, want to say at all, but very little of the time. Oh, personally, I miss it. You know, formally, Tuesday night, every second Tuesday was the social hi highlight of my week. <laughs> well, you, can, you still go out with Joe. To, you still go out uh, with Dr. Joe's afterwards. I guess that's true. <laughs> I, um, I, I do wonder how the hybrid will work. It will be a challenge to have a screen and... You know, will the town have to put a screen in every meeting room? I guess you will, or you have to space out your meetings to the, you know, who can get the room with the screen. But I do think it is to a benefit of the taxpayers to have better representation and access. So that's my two cents. Well, you're getting people attending meetings now that never would go to public in-person meetings, school committee, ZBA, on and on and on. Most of those meetings were never televised. Now people can just go to the town clerk agenda, click on it, and boom, they can, they can, they can watch it. They can put their two cents in. Yeah. So. Good points. You, know. you don't always want those two cents, but hey, they're What do you, what do you think, Dr. Zagrodnik? Do you miss the old days? They have just as much right to be heard. You know, certainly most of the meetings we can conduct on Zoom. But there are those meetings, for example, that would require an audience. For example, the, uh, the former Nyabala garage situation. Uh, that's, I don't know if it's all been ironed out, but... You know, I, th I think we'd have 30, 40 people there. And I think people would like to speak up and hear, hear their differences. I know we're not going to have a couple of thousand people like we had at the special permit hearing for the Hampshire Mall. But uh, certainly, I think you got to have some provision for a large meeting occasionally. Who was the gentleman who brought in samples for us to smell the hemp? That won't happen. Was it Joe Tchaikovsky? Well, the guy who's coming up with the solar plant panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, don't you? Don't you? They have smell o vision now. That's yeah. <laughs> I don't have that app. Yeah. <laughs> So. Well, yeah, I, I take your point, Joe, that I think when we have the Walmarts of the world uh, right. and we need to be in the cafeteria anyway, um, that's that's different. But uh, the day to day. Um, I uh, mean, certainly the technology that you're presenting, Bill, is is wonderful. I mean, you can call things up. But you have the screens. Oh, in yeah, I agree. Yeah, and and you know, Marguerite, you know, it, I don't know that it went the way Marguerite wanted it to go last meeting and tonight, but she was able to be there. I mean, she seems to have her hands full with her life, and she said she's got a number of grandchildren or whatever there. Um, you know, this makes it possible for her to do both. I, you know, I I don't know exactly how it's going to work going forward, but I I'm I'm a strong proponent of hybrid you know i don't want to get rid of in person but i think if we can accommodate both i don't know uh, maybe give... in 10 years they'll look back and laugh at us like oh remember that <laughs> oh, when, when hybrid happens you're going to need one panoramic view of the board sitting at the table and one panoramic view of the audience well, I hope I'm around for 10 years. It's my birthday today, and if I'm hey, hey, make it for another 10 years, that is wonderful. What are you, 75 again, Joe? 
Yes, I am. It. So one of the thirty-eight, uh, it just flips it over. One one of the comments that was made advocating for re, for not doing it by Zoom was from um, a lawyer for the um, oh, some sort of a state media uh, group about how important it was for the reporter to go up to people after the meeting and ask for a clarification about what really happened. And I'll do a shout out to Scott Mersbach, who has not graced our, uh, uh, not been in our presence for quite a while, but seems to be able to do uh, stories about us quite, uh, quite thoroughly and probably more accurately than when he was scribbling down notes as everybody was talking. Right. So, either watches it live or watches it the next day and um, generates his um, his stories from that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to make, make a comment on that, that the, the accuracy of the newspaper reporting is tremendously improved. I remember seeing write-ups prior to Scott doing some of our reporting and I looked right in the newspaper about things that I had said. And I actually went back to the tape and requested a copy because I never remembered saying those things. And this was before it was taped and put on YouTube and every place else. And sure enough, I never said those things, but the reporter somehow, through hearsay or otherwise, put these wild comments in their, in their newspaper article. And now, you know, it's... You listen to the, you, you watch the YouTube. What did they say? Back up. What did they say? Back up. It's not clear. You know, and the, the, the accuracy is much improved. I agree, Bill. It, it's a lot better. So, Mark, you, you were, this was before your time, but once upon a time, um, the uh, happy tended to get the new reporters, someone just out of college. Uh, oh, yeah someone was doing part-time or stringing together a couple of towns. And I remember one of them being almost offended when she was telling me that uh, Hadley was the only town, this was the Gazette, where the Gazette required the Hadley reporter to attend the school committee meeting, the planning board meeting, and the, and the um, select board meeting. And in no other town was the planning board meeting a required stop um and uh of course now the, the, the re number of reporters has dropped we don't get our our own uh for everything but uh it uh those are the days yeah yeah, yeah. I well still hopefully get calls it got the next day saying what what was that about but Hopefully I'm not still here when we attend as a holograph, but uh, I still like in person, but I do enjoy the Zoom, the doom of Zoom. Mm -hmm. They're extremely convenient. That's for sure. And look, we also are stimulating the economy. We made Joe go out and buy a new computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you get an iPhone yet, Joe? Yes. You did? In fact, I just, I, just, I just got a, a message from Tom Quinlan wishing me a happy birthday. <laughs> oh, nice. Holy smokes. Quinlan messaged me. He said, you make these meetings fun and entertaining. Thank you. That's my intent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do well, we have I anything else? People, I, I don't have anything. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> hey, Tommy. Hey, Tom. Anything else? If not, I have nothing. Okay. Hey, Tom, before I go, I got one question for you. Mr. Building Commissioner, is it true that the town requires UMass to take down that big inflatable football practice thing every couple of years? Mark. No, I think that's a, I think that's a state code that if it's going to be a temporary structure, it can only be up for so long. And because I mean, Tommy, Tommy can correct me, but I they might have gotten a waiver the first year or something. But I think I don't know. I'm I'm probably speaking out of turn. 
they elected not to put in a sprinkler system because it was temporary. And that's why they're, that's what I heard. Okay. You're muted, Tom. Your device is muted. Yeah. It's not a Zoom mute. At least we can't hear you. No. Anyway, so. Okay. We can, we'll read your lips. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's got to be on your device somehow. Katie, figure it out. It's got to be yeah, some kind of a Oak in Rogers. birthday. My wife and I ordered him to buy, or offered to buy him two jars of Grecian formula, and he was almost was going to come to the meeting tonight with it applied, but he declined. <laughs> okay. I turned gray rather prematurely, to uh, as many of you know, uh, and uh, when I was practicing, I was I kind of took a survey. And one of the kids says, oh, no, Dr. Z, you would look like a Ken doll. I never knew what a Ken doll was. But, uh, yeah, and there you see he had black hair, the old geezer. All right. You want to know what he looked like? Going to Joe's Pizza, there's a picture up on the wall of the basketball team that Joe sponsored back in, what, the 70s, 80s, 70s? Uh, that was, yeah, that was not my sponsorship, but I played with – Yeah. In the city league, right. All right. The hearing and nothing else. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. No. A motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Meeting is history. Thank you. And thank you, John. Thank you, um, Tom, too. I already hung up. Yeah.